Hey, what's up everybody? So Ryan J. Owens here, agency owner, uh, pro since 2002. I've lived abroad. I live abroad actually since then in Europe and former Team USA player, Champions League level, all this kind of good stuff. I love volleyball. Today we're going to have on Kat Bell. Uh, she played for Texas Volleyball, which everybody knows. University of Texas, Austin is one of the best programs in the country. They won four Big 12 Conference Championships and a lot of other things since. Let's check in with her and see what's up. So, I'm gonna... And if you guys have any questions, make sure you comment about them and we'll try to get to them after. Good morning. Good morning or good evening from here. Oh, good evening. <laughs> uh, so, let's just dive right in, yeah? Yeah, let's go. All right. In one second or less, how would you describe yourself? I'm uh, one sentence or less. I'm a very ambitious person. I think throughout my life, whether it's volleyball or, or just being a normal person in the world, I'm very ambitious. Um, I'm not scared of a lot of things. I just kind of go after what I want. Love it. So what's your name, age, position, and where are you from? Uh, my name is Kathleen Bell, better known as Cat Bell. I am from Dallas, Texas, and I am an opposite, oh, slash outside, so yeah. Nice. And which, with countries and levels, can you list the teams since club volleyball? Since club, man, high school days. So I played for Texas Assault from my first three years of club. I started playing when I was about 15, and I was playing up a level, up an age group. And so I was playing 16s in Dallas, and then my last year I played with Dallas Premier. And then from college, I played University of Texas, Wickham Horns. Um, I was there for obviously four years, graduated. Um, my first contract, I was so blessed to play in Korea my first year um, for GS Celtics. My second year, I played in Turkey two year, for two years in a row, A2 for Manisa, BBSK, and Balakasir. And then this, after playing in Balakasir, I was fortunate enough to go play in the Philippines. And I was to play someone and won a championship. And then the following year, I went to um, uh, China. So I was in Hanan last year for about six months. And then I had a great opportunity again to come back and play in the spring for an entire season in the Philippines again. And we won again. So, yeah. Nice. So explain the difference between the levels and the expectations of the teams. But let's start from Texas and, and yeah. move. Texas is a great program. You know, um, Jared, Coach Elliott expects a lot from his players and to perform under pressure. And um, I think that kind of leads into your professional career as well. You're, you're getting paid at this time and teams are going to see to make sure that you're going to be able to perform at a high level. And if you can't, you know, unfortunately, we can get dismissed. But um, playing is also two, two different things uh, day and night. You know, Texas is more patient. Allegiant volleyball is more patient. You have time to grow and develop your game. As far as a professional career, you can go out and play with girls who are maybe 10 years older than you who have been balling since they've been playing and are expected to play it at the same way. So, I mean, I think a lot of players should be more optimistic about that point and have to have to have a very, very tough skin when going to play professional level, especially at a very, very high level. Wow. And... Why did you choose that last team? And what last did you team. take away from that experience? Um, so my last team, um, we kind of got some of China and the Philippines together. Well, you know, I had, I had a great opportunity to go out and try out, and I got to know the coaches and the girls. I was over there for a trial um, over a five-day period, and um, I loved it. You know, I'm very, I guess, multicultural. You can put me anywhere, and I just kind of blend in, you know. By the time I was leaving, they're like, Kat, you're not American, you're Chinese. So I'm like, okay, yeah. And then the Philippines, you know, I developed a great relationship with them um, my first year, and I was so happy to go back, and they wanted to wanted me to come back and play. And, you know, the Philippines is just great, very Western, um, kind of easy to kind of insert yourself as well. And, you know, I enjoyed playing. Patron is probably one of the best teams I've ever played for, just hands down, not just volleyball-wise, just like company and staff, and the players all amazing. So, yeah, definitely, I've, I've enjoyed it, definitely. Nice. And let's uh, give people a little bit of insight into the level differences. Like, let's go – uh, collegiate, your best year at Texas versus like Turkey A2 versus China, Philippines, this kind of thing, Korea. Well, I think 2012 winning national championship, I think, was not just for myself but as a team. You know, that was our best year as a whole group. And um, how we were playing that year and just on all ends of the board was just completely outstanding. You know, we were um, challenged a little bit. Um, going into the semifinals, we were down two sets versus Michigan and then having to kind of battle back from that. Um, two set loss being behind and kind of coming back and then using that same determination going to the national championship the next night was 
unbelievable. And I think just, you know, the mentality that I had then as a player compared to what I have now is very similar. You know, I'm, I'm a go-getter. And um, depending on what team you're going or what league you're playing in, I feel like players should always have the mentality, whether it's a higher level or a lower level. Um, because at the end of the day, that comes, that comes from film and it comes from when you get your chips. So you want to make sure you're stacking as much coins as you can. But, I mean, it's, it's completely different, just depending on where you're playing. Like China is a, a very high-level league. I was playing some of the best players in the world, and they were on a fast, better, faster ball, and I was playing on a young team. So not only that, was I just being a player, I was being a mentor, you know, trying to help younger girls, you know, develop that same mentality that I was doing at a young age, but already playing at that high level. Um, the Philippines is the same thing. Um, we were challenged a few times the past um, two seasons that I've been there, but being a mentor again, trying to make sure that they are playing at a high level, that they're okay on the court and they feel good. And I'm making sure that I'm the person that I am on and off the court all the time. Um, Turkey as well. Turkey was probably my, I would say my toughest season, my starting off because it was my first year into Europe. And Europe League, they're very serious. And like I said, the, the girls there are, are older and they expect you to play at a certain level. And when you don't, they're going to let you know. And I think that's what that tough skin kind of built up with. I think my first year I went in with um, a little more, glassy-eyed, you know, I was trying to be friendly and be everyone's friend, and, like, that kind of bit me in the butt a little bit. Some of the girls thought they'd kind of walk over me, and I wasn't sure how to respond to that because I am ideally a very nice person, so going into someone else's country, you know, I kind of respect their culture, obviously, and respect who they are, so I wasn't trying to step on anyone's toes. And then going to my second year, I was like, hell no, like, I'm going to do me regardless, so you want my respect, you got to earn it. So my second year going in, I didn't really talk to many people and I had my head down, I was grinding. And when matches start, I was on all the time and girls, they respect you for that. So our captain was very hard. Gamze was probably one of the most respectful players I've ever played with before. And she was tough on all of us and especially me. But by the time we were done um, and we had lost going into the Champions League and going into Sultan's League, which is the top league in Turkey, you know, she came up to me and she was like, I respect you and I love you. And like, it's been amazing to play with you now. Like, and, and that, for me, coming from her was a lot. It was just, like, unbelievable. So from then, I was kind of like, you know, I can do anything. And then playing in China, just depending on who you're playing with or playing against or who your staff is, everyone's different, you know. But I've always been lucky enough, blessed enough to have such great teams, great teammates, great coaches, uh, great experiences. So. And Korea. Korea, yeah. Oh, so Korea, that <laughs> – I think Korea, anyone that's played it, they already know that, like, that's a job in itself. And they make you earn – every dime through practices do matches you know do you expect to play at a high level and there were some times that like I had a bad games and my coaches they weren't really too hard on me but like I was a lot more hard on myself and I know what I can do and I expect a lot for myself so when I'm learning a certain skill and it's not coming as quickly as I want it to come I get frustrated so um but Korea was an amazing experience and I love the culture I uh, love the volleyball volleyball was great and I learned a lot about myself about my mentality and I definitely can say I grew from that season definitely. and that was your first season right yeah yes, yes. yes. Uh, what's expected from you generally as a pro by your teams? You touched on it a little bit, but... What's expected of me? I'm, they expect me to be myself, you know. Um, win or lose, this is the face that you get, you know, and I think it's important to kind of change the mentality about losing matches because it's always important to go to the next game with a fresh start, you know. We had, last year in the Philippines, uh, we were defending our championship, our championship and um, we hadn't lost a match the entire season, so we went to the champion, we went to the finals, I think we were 17 or 18-0, and we lost the first, so it was best two out of three. We lost, we lost the first series of the game. And, you know, right away, even though we had lost, I was already in my teammates' face saying, hey, you know, our backs have been so well right now, but, you know, it's going to be okay. we to stand the storm. Next game, they get after it because they had, like, a 24-hour turnaround period. So um, they expect me to be personality on and off the court. And I try my hardest to do that, even if I'm having a bad match. I try to make sure that I'm giving somehow some way part of the game, whether it's getting the kill, getting the block, or just getting so much energy all the time. You know, they expect me to be just me and who I am. Yeah. Uh, why? Let's uh, let's switch it up from your playing career and everything to how you even went about that career. So, why is an agent important? It's really important. I think I'm um, definitely starting off. You don't really know a lot about the volleyball world. You don't know about the volleyball economy. You know that definitely differs from year to year. Um, it's important to have someone to kind of have that safeguard, that safe blanket when you're overseas and someone that can come visit you and kind of check in on you when they can. And if I'm kind of more of a hands-off player, so if I can take care of it myself, I will try. But there's certain things, whether it's like if I'm not getting paid or like whatever, I will have my agent come in and kind of represent me a little bit more and be a little more tough more than I could do. Because at the end of the day, it's like your stress shouldn't be about things that are happening within your contract, especially somebody else's energy. You should be your, your energy to make sure you're playing well and um, getting to your team. So I think it's a very important, and I think it's important to kind of not only dial in, like, through the people around you, but it's important to know what you want in some more and in an agent. So definitely, yeah.
And uh, just hopping right off of that to something related, what's your experience with agents so far? So far, I've been good, you know. Um, I was with my agency for the past. I've been playing for about now, going to my fifth year, and I've been with the same agency. Um, just recently, I've kind of decided to kind of branch off and obviously do my research about different agencies and kind of see what I'm looking for and who I work well with. Um, but I've been very great. I haven't had any bad experiences. At the same time, like I said, again, every player is different and different players expect different things from different people. Like I said, again, myself is like, if I can do it, I'm going to try to do it. And if I can't do it, okay, then I'll let you kind of do it. But I think it's very important to kind of know, not only look, it's, it's a relationship any other time, like you're building relationships. It's not, it, and also it's a business. You have to understand that as well. So um, it's important to kind of figure out what you're looking for, what do you want and how you settle with someone else, you know, kind of handling your career. Because in the, the day, it's like you as an agent, you have a lot of to do with how where they go and what they do. But at the same time, I think players have to understand the responsibility of you got to play. So you can't expect to play at a certain level or get paid a certain salary if you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing as a player. So but I think it's, it's very important. Uh, it's a very symbiotic relationship. Um, in your or, or, or actually, let's just go to Elite Volley Fam, since this is this whole thing that I'm trying to do to educate players, because I think people didn't believe me. So I was like, you know, screw it. Let's just do interviews. Let's let's put it out there. For me, yes. it's very important that all athletes have this starting place that is much better than what it is now, because so many people are coming out of college and they're just running into things. And of yeah. course, we know that there's usually a wall that you're going to exactly. run. Exactly. Exactly. So, what is the word on the street right now about Elite Volley Fam or Elite Volley that you have heard? So for me, I think it's important that players understand that are tuning in or who are interested in coming to your company. Um, that I'm in the same boat. You know, I'm also talking to other players and trying to see what you guys are about. Right now, you guys, Elite Volleyball Fam is the main thing as a fam. You guys are a family. You guys represent so many girls that play at a high level. And like the majority of those girls that you guys do represent, I do know are really good players, really good people. And I think it's important that like your brand and what you represent shows you know um you can go when you go onto your instagram page and you see you guys you, all the girls you've signed up i encourage players to go and do your research go ask go ask around you know go see where these players are playing go see where these players kind of came from um so i love that you know i know that you're very hands-on with your players and you're trying your best all the time and you know also you give them kind of that leeway to kind of that space to be able to move around and kind of do certain things as long as they like certain boundary between with you so that's my thing right now too like talking with you and talking to Haley um, and learning more about what you guys are about is very important to me as well. So I think it's important to kind of dive into that and don't be afraid to ask questions. Never be afraid to ask questions, definitely. Yeah. Uh, okay. And then what would you say that you like or respect about agencies in general compared to what might be minuses for you? So like, what are you really truly looking for if you sum it all up? So this is, think back to, you know, rookie year. What yeah. should you be thinking? When I was a rookie, I think, I mean, I wasn't even expecting myself to really play. Like, I wasn't really sure if I wanted to play professionally after graduating college. But, um, you know, I, I love volleyball. You know, volleyball's not who I am. I always tell people that I'm not a, I'm not a, I, I'm a volleyball player, but it's not who I am. Um, but at that time, you know, I definitely was interested in, like, you know, trying to see what I could do with it and trying to see how much money I could make. And now I've been very blessed to put myself in great positions. I enjoy playing volleyball, and I like playing at a high level, but, you know, at the same time, I have responsibility for my family, and I'm looking to see who can give me the most money. But that's just me. You know, other players can, like um, certain girls are looking to play in championships, league teams, and um, playing in maybe a great country to travel in. Some players aren't looking to; they don't really care where they play. You know, um, first one for me, I think right now, now I am where I am now. I'm definitely trying to see. You know, I've developed my career a lot. Where can I go to learn a little bit more if I want to keep continue to do this? And then who's going to give me the most for my time? Um, I think starting off as a rookie, like you have to know that it's not that that that's not really important. You know, obviously playing, for example, A one in Italy was is could be amazing. You know, part of the game or a great experience to do. But like, if you don't really know a lot about Italy and don't really know how those teams work and how they play, and I mean, yeah, they they play at a great high level, but like really how they work as a unit, I don't think it's a, it's not a great start because it's it's hard. Italy's hard, and those girls expect a lot from the players they bring in. You know, these girls live, die, sleep, eat, poop, volleyball. And that's one thing I've always respected about that league. And for myself, it's one reason why I never really tried to kind of insert myself there because I know how much pressure it is. And that's something that like, I'm not really like there yet or as like that kind of determination. Like I love to play, but like, I'm not going to drive myself nuts about it. If that makes sense. So I think it's important to kind of really do your research and ask questions and talk to your agents about like what these teams, how they are, 
what they expect from you and like what the mentality is on the team. Because I think mentality and environment of a team is very important. And someone going into an Italian first league and playing for a team that's, I mean, lights out, these girls expect a lot. So you can't go on there and being like, oh, well, I'm a rookie. It's not going to work like this. It's not going to fly. It's you're an adult. You're a grown woman. This is a grown woman volleyball and they expect you to play like a grown woman. Yeah. Um, and just to speak into that just a little bit, I think it's very important what you just said for everybody to really take that in and understand that you can, I mean, there's players, right? I, I was the same way, but after a certain point in my career, because I wasn't a high level volleyball player when I came over here, you know, yeah. I just had that potential. But once I became that high level volleyball player, it was like, all right, now how do I make money moves? How, like, what, what am I going to do? And I, I remember choosing an A1 team in Italy over an A1 team in France that was Champions League, and I tried out for both, and I got the offer the same weekend. And I still kind of look back. I loved my time in Italy, but I always wonder, you know, that feeling that I got from the French team and the environment that was there, plus the way they expect you to play, um, and when things they're, – they're also at that Champions League level. So they're actually at a higher level than my A1 team that was not yeah. Euro Cup. Yeah. But different experience, you know, and the money was the same, so it was like – it's one of those things where you've got to understand what type of person am I? What am I ready for? What, what, what risk am I taking by exposing myself to somebody who, like you said, you might have teammates that are so much older and they're just like, if you're not playing well, you can't use the I'm a rookie card or <laughs> I'm new to this or I don't speak the language. It's, no. you, you, you do. That's it. Yeah. I think that's so, one thing that I had like, such a great experience about. Like I played in Korea. You know, I got all that, and I was experienced and exposed to so much of that of the culture and like how they play and the serious of it, and I made a lot of money. And I got to the point I was like, hey, you know what? Like, I don't know why A two gets such a bad rep because A two is very, very, very competitive. And um, when I was going into my second year playing in Turkey, I was like, you know, like after playing what I just did and working so hard and making what I made, I'm okay with taking a pay cut. Like my body needs some time to kind of like come down from what I was just doing because I. Had from playing nine months in Korea, and then like I was home for like a week, and then playing the last two months in Puerto Rico. So I was like, "Hey, you know what? Actually, don't even worry about the person A one team. If I can make you know just some money to help with this, whatever I've set, I'm set, setting on enough. I'm okay with playing in A two. And when I went to Turkey and playing A two, it's a still the same ball game. Like they're practicing twice a day. These girls are playing, and then you know, then you're going, and then people know get to know who you are. And then like you, and A two was great, but then at the time when you establish yourself. You can play it too again and then ask for more money because they know who you are. So I was getting paid like how the girls are getting played, paid in A1, but I was playing A2. And then A2, next year, you know, there were A1 players coming down to A2 that next season and playing against me. I'm kind of like, what the, what's going on, you know? But, I mean, people have to be open-minded about it. And, and I'm so happy that I took that break from playing in Korea. Like, that was, like, just kind of like a popular decision. So, you know what? Your girl's tired. <laughs> I'm tired. I want something a little bit more easy. And I definitely didn't get that, but it was still, it was such a great experience. It was, it was great. Okay. And then let's take it to your experience. Cause you're right now a player with experience. You're looking for different things. You're looking to make some career moves. Like you said, you're trying to invest in also your game in general yeah. to see where you're going to be. Uh, and you're limited dealing with me right now with like your, cause I know you're interviewing me in some ways and, and speaking with people, what's your perception of how it is to work with me so far, just talking and, and doing a little bit of things? Like I said, like I, it's a relationship, and I think it's important to have some kind of connection with anyone that you're working with, whether it's your teammate or your boyfriend, husband, whatever, um, to have that dialect. And I think it's been great. You know, I, whenever I have any questions for you, you're super hands-on. You respond very quickly. Uh, we've been phone calls a few times, and, um, and you understand me about the kind of person that I am and what I'm looking for. I don't feel pressured by you. Um, it's easy. It's very easy. And what I'm looking for, like kind of the micromanagement, I get that from you. You know, I don't need someone who's constantly over me. Like you're doing this, doing that. Da, 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 da. I love that you're, you're very micromanaged. And um, I enjoy talking to you. Like I feel comfortable. I don't feel like I'm talking to someone foreign or I don't know you. Um, I just feel really comfortable. <laughs> Funny. All my friends say I'm foreign. They say I'm Europe. <laughs> <laughs> I just mess with you. So what are common mistakes that you hear? Last couple questions that, rookies will make coming out of college so let's think of like two times of the year i think right now is a very important time mm -hmm. and then have a little more time when you're graduating may or june so mm -hmm. i think what they what they are mis most of the misinformed make mistakes are about um 
what's really happening with the market around that time of the year, you know. By that time, come in December, going into January, maybe some teams are having some um, some problems or switching players in and out. So, for example, if you have someone who signed a contract from August until maybe April, May, they're going to make a full, let's say, 100, 100K. But, like, if you're coming in half the season, you can't expect 100K for playing half the season, you know. Um, so I think they kind of are misinformed about that part of it, not really thinking about the time period when they're coming in. Um, at the same time, it's like you have to really think about your level as a player and what you can contribute to certain teams, depending on what level it is, what league it is. Um, and also, they, they my, I would say from even myself, you know, nothing is ever too much. You know, try and see what you can get from teams. Try and see see if you can get certain things that you want. You know, I think my um, second year in Turkey, and I was always afraid to ask, you know, like, well, I, need, I do need this. I wish I did this, you know. I would like to live alone, but, like, there's too many of us. You know, don't be afraid to ask, because teams are sometimes can make changes, and it's okay, you know. Um, so I think it's important to, like, don't be afraid to really ask for what you want, you know. It's the worst case scenario, they say no, and that's it. I mean, fine, but, I mean, but that's just the worst that can happen, you know, so. And I'll, I'll just add one caveat in there before I get this last question. But ask for what you want and, like, don't, I mean, try for these things but when you're a rookie, even when you're an experienced player, it's better to always have that person with you, that agent, yeah. where you're actually asking for that stuff rather than asking the team. And, yeah. and and one other thing that I see more so with high-level contracts, so we're talking like 80K to 400K, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, you, you see players that they get in with someone and, and now all of a sudden these people start swarming them and coming from every direction and I could do this or I could do that. Stay true to somebody, really, mm -hmm. to show you, be transparent in their business so that you can understand that they're doing what they're saying they're doing. Mm -hmm. And then that way, you can be confident in saying, I'm going to put up my blinders for everybody mm -hmm. else, and I'm going to trust this person to do this because I see that they're saying it, or I know mm -hmm. that they're saying it. Yeah. They're going to fight for that. And I think it's very good advice that you don't just settle. Yeah. Ask what's possible. Yeah. And know that sometimes like right at that beginning you want to kind of test the waters yeah two year three you start to really get into things like you yeah. said after korea so yeah. all right uh last kind of thing is i just want you to impart your wisdom thinking back to yourself leaving america going to play pro how would you talk to yourself now knowing what you now i would say don't can i cuss I'm just not going to cuss. It's fine. Don't be freaking afraid. Do not be afraid. I think I was so, like, worried all the time and just worried about, like, am I playing well? Or, like, are they going to fire me? I was so worried all the time. And, like, it kind of affected my game a little bit in the beginning. But, like, I would definitely myself now who I am, I'd just be like, girl, just go for it. Have confidence. Like, be confident. You're here for a reason. They're paying you for this for a reason. You're already here. You might just do it, you know? I definitely would say to myself, just be more confident and just be aggressive and just go for it, you know? Definitely. Yeah. Love it. Well, thank you so much, Kat, for the interview, for giving your wisdom. I love what you're doing with mentoring others. You know that's my jam, too. So but good luck to your team. Thanks. See you soon. Of course. Yeah. Hook them horns. Let's go, baby. Woo!